All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Sminify Podcast. Today, I believe we're on episode number 21, and I think I'm going to start out this episode by just hopping right into addressing the uh, the elephant in the room, which is like, where have the uploads been? What, what What's up with the upload schedule, which has been non-existent, basically? <laughs> Discord jokes roasting the upload schedule, which is fair. But uh, yeah, so if you guys don't know, like two weeks ago, I made a video titled, Coming Back to YouTube, for real this time. And in that video, I promised like a regular upload schedule. And since that video's been made, I've made like two pieces of content, and I haven't followed that schedule at all, which... My apologies, guys. I know I literally promised that, and it hasn't happened at all. And you guys obviously have the right to be kind of upset and frustrated over that. Like, I, I can acknowledge that. I can respect that, obviously, when, when somebody promises you something that doesn't happen. But uh, basically, the reasoning for that is... So this whole last year has just been feeling different for the channel, honestly. Because what I did was I pretty much said this like a million times. I took the time to focus on my last year of high school, all right? So I just chose, like, sports, friends, family over making YouTube videos and stuff. And especially during the month of May, I definitely just put YouTube aside, which is why I took like a three-week break from streaming and stuff. I just put YouTube aside. I said, I'm going to finish out my senior year strong here, and I'm just going to involve, be par participate in like as many things as I can. Just because the way I look at it, YouTube will pretty much always be here. Like, I don't know when YouTube's going to end, but YouTube, the platform, will pretty much always be here. Now, granted, the community might not always be here because like in YouTube, if you don't upload for like three weeks, you're irrelevant, you're gone pretty much. That's that's like two years in YouTube time, in social media time, because we're a generation of instant entertainment. There's so many other options and stuff, so if you don't upload, people will lose interest in you and you'll become irrelevant, But which is kind of where the channel's heading right now if I don't revive it, as always. Um, I swear I've had to revive this channel like 5,000 times because I keep taking breaks. And what happened was when this summer came along, I thought, you know, obviously I'm going to have a lot of free time this summer. Uh, school is gone, can't use that. And the thing is, I have had the time to make the videos, but it's just a... A big lack of motivation thing. Video editing for me, which if you guys don't know, video editing takes so many hours. It takes so many hours. It used to be a much more enjoyable process for me. Well, people are going off in the politics chat. I'll have to read that later. Uh, editing used to be a much more enjoyable experience for me. I mean, it never was enjoyable, but like, I tried to make a video these last like week and I just haven't, like I just started and I just like, I get so uninterested so quickly. And the best way I can relate this video editing problem is like playing video games. Like I used to play video games a lot. I could like, Back in my younger years, I played games, like, all day. It was kind of bad. But the thing is, like, nowadays when I start to play a video game, I literally just... I get bored in, like, an hour. I can't do it. And it's just one of those things growing up you lose interest in. And I don't know if YouTube's like that right now. Or, like, I'm growing up, I just have other things. And, like, I'm le losing interest in it. But I have definitely, like... The motivation, the enjoyment in video editing is just down hor horrendously. It's just gone. And I think a part of that might be because I've made it a habit not to make videos anymore. Like, a year ago on YouTube, I uploaded, like, 86 days in a row. That was my habit. That was what I found acceptable. And then after that school came along, I started uploading like one video a week and then like two live streams and I found that acceptable and I kept moving the barriers, the boundaries of what I found acceptable. And then eventually it was like two live streams a week was acceptable towards the end of the school year. And then eventually I found it acceptable to just not do anything at all, which looking back on my high school years or my, my senior year anyway, I don't really regret doing anything. Like I pretty much participated in like as many things as I could. So I don't, I don't regret not participating in anything or like spending time differently for that last month that I took off of YouTube. So I don't really regret doing that, but I just found it acceptable to just live stream, not make videos at all. And uh, nowadays here we are in the middle of summer and I want to, I really want to make videos. I should find that acceptable. I should be, I should only find it acceptable to upload like every other day. And here we are. I've made two pieces of content in like two weeks when I've definitely had the time to make the videos. And again, it's just motivation. But I think this is going to be a good week because we're starting the week off strong with the podcast. I've said it before. The best way to start the week is with the podcast. I have two videos already like recorded and almost made. So we should get those out. And I'm thinking this will be a strong week on the channel. And hopefully I'll see how it goes. If I can revive the channel here. Maybe YouTube is just something that's fading for me. It's not as much fun as it used to be. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Because I've definitely, I don't know, I've definitely changed since since a long time ago. And I definitely, I see the future where the channel is thriving again. And I upload regularly. And everybody's happy. The community's happy. Which is definitely not where we're at right now. And it's pretty much on me. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to have a strong week here on YouTube. Pretty much for you guys. That's just the quick gist of that. That's what happened. It's just motivation. I've definitely had the time. And my apologies to everyone who I basically lied to. Because you guys came out in crazy support in that returning to YouTube video. And it got like 60 likes, which is absolutely insane. And then we had the Sminicraft live stream. People came out for that. It was awesome. And it's really just on me, honestly. This is a huge opportunity here. And like, I think, yeah, again, like starting a... For starting a community, I think I've literally been blessed with like the best community possible, man. And I, I would definitely be missing an opportunity here if I didn't take full advantage of it. But uh, at the same time, it's just like, if you don't enjoy doing it, then my PC is very dusty. Wow, I really don't. Wow, I need to play that thing more. Then if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then why are you doing it? And honestly, we'll see how it goes. I'm not saying I'm done with YouTube. It kind of sounds like that right now, but no. You might think it sounds like that, but no. I see the days where the channel's back. It's coming. I, I can feel it. I just got to find that motivation. And I kind of got to figure out what I want to do with my content because I don't really know. I just have a bunch of random ideas. I kind of have these next couple weeks planned out to see what happens. 
and uh, we'll see if I can fulfill on that. But anyways, guys, that's how that's going. There's another thing I want to talk about today. That's the YouTube channel. We got the, the basic YouTube channel update, which we always have in these uh, podcasts, which I just realized the last podcast I made was like two months ago. So that's tough. I remember saying a long time ago, if the whole channel dies, I just want to continue the podcast. And I've also failed that promise. So a lot of failed promises on YouTube. I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. But we're trying to work on it, guys. Again, my apologies. Sorry, everyone. Anyways, so it all came to an end to me. It all came to an end for me. Not, not. It sounds like I just died there. No, uh, this May was the the end of my senior year, the end of my high school days, the end of my uh, my lower, my first education years are now done. And uh, looking back on it, I can't say I regret much, but at the same time, I'm also very saddened to uh, to see it go. As always, wow, very generic. Everyone says that, but anyways, I just want to kind of talk about how the last how the last month went, basically. And uh, if you guys don't know, I basically spoke at our graduation. Um, so, like, if you guys don't know, like, the smartest guy in the class with the best grades and the second best get to speak at graduation. I was neither of those two. I just got picked because the, the smartest guy didn't want to speak, and I was, like, third or something. So they were like, you're speaking. I was like, all right, we'll speak at graduation. So pretty much my plan for this podcast, I want to read off this speech that I wrote, and I uh, I spoke at graduation. If you guys want to – if you guys have to speak at graduation someday, I'll give you some uh, awesome inspiration with my graduation speech, which is very generic like many graduation speeches. But I'll continue to read off the, uh, the transcript for that. But, yeah, the thing is, the craziest thing I've had to grasp with since graduating, obviously, is just this – concept that all these things that I've known for so long are done forever like as humans I don't know if we can comprehend the word infinity but for me like my basketball team I'm never we're done forever for my life anyway which is basically infinity and I don't know if I can quite comprehend that because up until this entire moment my whole life like second grade oh, I'm done with basketball we'll be back next year fifth grade done we'll be back sixth grade year junior year all right I'm done sad to see the seniors go but I'll be I'll, I have another season left I'll be back next year and now we're done with the senior year, and I can't say there's going to be another year. So it's just hard to comprehend. And it, ha it hasn't. Once school was done, it didn't hit me right away. I was like, oh, it just feels like it's another year where everything's done. But these last like week, this last week or two, I've been like, oh, it's really over. There's no coming back now. We got to move on in life, and it is kind of scary. But at the same time, you know, I think everyone figures it out with time. Because like even like a year ago, I didn't know where I wanted to go with college. Didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, and I figured that out. So I think even though I'm kind of a little nervous about the future now, we'll definitely figure it out because I think kind of everyone does really in the end. But yeah, that concept of infinity, it's done forever. Track is done forever. Basketball is done forever. Golf is done forever. The best sport ever. The golf team is done anyway. The good thing about golf, I can I can do that till I'm like 80. So we still got that. But anyways, getting into this speech, which by the way, I just want to go through the last week of my high school career here because it was actually insane what happened. So I was doing two sports towards the end of the year. I did golf and I did track golf started in like what was it I don't even know like April or something April March and track started in like late February so two sports going at once my main my main sport was track and my secondary sport was golf and honestly like I was kind of hesitant do I want to do both of these yeah I don't regret it at all I loved going out for both of those sports they were both very enjoyable and here's the thing I made it to state in both of those so if you guys don't know state is like the biggest the biggest stage for the high school sports pretty much I mean there's like nationals for some things but I'm not that good no way uh, but I made it to state in track, and I also made it to state in golf. I got absolutely carried by my team to state in golf. Thank you, boys. But I, I was I was the cheerleader. I was there at least. And here's how the schedule went for the last week of school, pretty much, or the last, yeah, whatever. So first we had state track, right? We had state track Thursday, Friday, Saturday was state track, all right? So we left for school on Thursday, state track Friday, Saturday. Then I came back on Sunday to graduate, and I gave my speech on that Sunday, which I'll, I'll read off here in a second. And then after I graduated that day and did all the parties and stuff and held all that, the next day on Monday, I think it was Monday morning, I left off for state golf, and I golfed for three days until Wednesday. So my last week was absolutely insane, and I'll never forget how awesome that was. And that's why if you guys are, like, contemplating going out for a sport or something or an organization, I would highly recommend doing that because, like, those are what made school fun for me. I recently said on the Discord server, like, oh, I miss school so bad, and, like, you guys got to enjoy your school years while they, while they last, sounding so generic in the, in the uh, advice. And you guys basically just were like, no, I hate school. Which, you know, looking back on it, I also hated school. The, the only thing I miss is the sports. I don't miss school at all. So if you guys, like, don't participate in sports and stuff, I could I could see why you want to graduate and get out of school. But no, for me, it's definitely just the sports and all the activities and that type of thing that I'm going to miss a lot. Don't miss school at all. So if you don't participate in those, obviously, you're not going to miss much. But uh, again, I would recommend going out for those. But if you do participate in something that's going to come to an end your uh, senior year, I would just recommend you take it all in. Like, at state track, I remember I was warming up down there, and I just took it all in. I looked around. The cool thing is the track at State, it's like down in a bowl, so like everyone sits up kind of elevated above you, and I just looked around, took a look at the crowds, and I was like, this is pretty sweet. 
And at State Golf also, I kind of just took a minute to like look around and just take it all in. And I think that's pretty important to do. And it gives you that memory. And it just gives you the feel, man. And it, it honestly kind of gets you hyped up at the end of the day. Like for track, I didn't place. You have to get top eight. I think we got like ninth or tenth or something, which is kind of disappointing. But yeah, you just got to take it all in and just acknowledge how awesome it is and how, how fortunate it is to be able to do that type of stuff. Yeah, those are good times. But anyways, it all came to an end. And now I'm just I'm just grasping with the idea of infinity time. It's done forever for me. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It didn't hit me right away. Like right away, right as I finished, golf was the last thing I ever did school related. I finished it. My coach was like, that's it. You're done. Those are all your commitments to your high school. And I'm like, oh, all right. It feels normal. But then like a week later, it just hit me. I'm like, oh, I'm done. So anyways, guys, enjoy the last. Just enjoy it, lads. Just enjoy it. Because growing up, I would say, I don't know. Growing up is definitely an interesting experience. Um. Wow, I'm so old, aren't I? And I don't know. We'll see how college goes. But we're off to college soon, boys. We're going in August. And we just got to get over that. High school days are done. So we're going to hop right into this speech that I gave. So again, I was the... I guess I was the third smartest in the class. Let's go, boys. And honestly, okay, grades are not an accurate representation of how smart someone is, honestly. Like, school smarts is not important at all, really, at the end of the day. That just shows, like, effort level. But uh, nevertheless, we got the opportunity to give this graduation speech. So here's the speech that I gave on, like, May 30-something or whatever to a... A crowded, no, a pretty packed gym because we're in North Dakota, so COVID is COVID is gone, crab rave. Um, but here's the speech that I gave in front of, of everyone. So, if you guys are smart and you're going to have to give this speech, maybe use some motivation here or something, but this is how it went, all right? So I walk over there, they call my name, stand up in front of everyone. A little, honestly, I thought it'd be nor more nerve-wracking. I don't really, the thing about, like, giving presentations and speaking in front of people, I don't really get that, I do get nervous, but, like, once you get going, the nerves are just gone right away. Same thing with, like, a track race or golf. Like, once you get started, the nerves are gone right away. But it is kind of nerve-wracking to walk up there. But once I got started, I was like, this is whatever. And, like, the thing is with presentations, I wouldn't get nervous about those at school because the thing is, like, your classmates don't really care. They're going to forget what you said in, like, an hour. So it doesn't really matter what you do in presentations. But, yes, here's the speech. Here's the speech. And I think my delivery of the speech, I kind of started talking a little bit quick, people told me, which is tough. But it wasn't awful. Here we go. This is the Smitty speech at graduation, May 30-something or whatever. Good afternoon, friends, family, faculty, and students, class of 2021, and anyone else in attendance who somehow doesn't fit under these categories. Today we are gathered to witness myself and 29 other individuals claim a prize that formally marks the end of our journey here at our high school. A journey that for many of us started 13 years ago in this exact building. As a matter of fact, this stage was the exact location for our 2009 kindergarten program, and now it's where we'll spend our final moments together as we bid farewell to our high school days. So right there, I was trying to draw the comparison. Like, we did, like, it was crazy. Like, I graduated on the same stage that I had my kindergarten performance on. So I thought, we bring in the feels of nostalgia and stuff. People might enjoy that. I really, I didn't, <laughs> I'm such a big procrastinator that I literally wrote this speech, like, two nights before it was due and stuff. So I didn't put a whole lot of time into this. But I thought, you know what, people are going to pr probably forget the speech anyway. But it doesn't seem that long ago when we were the little kids, walking the halls, dressed in our neon green clothes, squeaky voices, aspiring to be like the cool big kids. Well, here we are. We've definitely gotten big, but when it comes to us being the most mature, well-behaved bunch of kids, well, we're working on it. So there's the there's the big joke. Like, honestly, high school graduation crowds are pretty light. Like, like they're, they're pretty easy to work with. Like, they'll laugh at jokes. I tried to be somewhat funny in my speech because... Yeah, because the person who went, who spoke before me, she said that she was going to kind of be like the more emotional speaker. So I had to be the, I had to come in with the humor. So that, that joke hit pretty good. I basically just made fun of how immature we are, which our, our class is definitely immature, which I think is a lot of people. But yeah, like, you know, the old folks will laugh at that. They, they laugh pretty easy at these speeches. But yeah, nevertheless, today marks a big accomplishment for the class of 2021. Today we'll, we will each walk across this stage, receive a piece of paper with our name on it, smile pretty for a photo, and then proceed to probably store the piece of paper in a storage bin in the garage somewhere, only to come back to it 30 years later when our kids ask us where our diploma is. Yeah, that, that's facts, man. I literally don't even know where my diploma is. But they, they laughed at this part, too. Basically, I was like, the generic joke that the, like you go to high school for like four years and it just leads up to this piece of paper, which is pretty accurate, honestly. Um, yeah, they laughed at that one. That, that was a good joke. That was a good joke. Um, but And then I said, seriously, I recently asked my mom where her diploma was, and after a brief moment of contemplation, she eventually said, I'm not sure. You know, a lot of the thing with these jokes is like it's about the delivery. Like, I don't know. I'm not some great speaker at all. I don't have much public speaking experience, but you know, it's just about, yeah, it's a lot about the delivery. Like stand-up comedians, I feel like they would tell you it's a lot about how you deliver the jokes, even like the content of the jokes. If it's even subpar, if you deliver it well, it's going to it's gonna land in the audience. So I think so far the audience was, they were kind of into it because they got a few chuckles. And that, that was the goal. Like my biggest fear was going up there making jokes and people just wouldn't react at all. It was just awkward silence. That would be terrible. But no, they, they were kind of laughing. Continue on. 
So although the paper may not be appreciated, there's no doubt that the friendships, memories, and experiences my classmates and I have gone through will be. So here's just the feel-good, generic, oh, all the memories. All this, we're getting to that part of the speech, right? I didn't try to be that special with my speech. I just kind of wanted to get it done. Uh, let's see. And believe me when I say that after spending 13 years in a class like this, with a very wide range of personalities, things could get interesting at times. Not wrong. We definitely had a very wide range of personalities. I can't lie. For example, on a regular basis this year, I would walk into English class only to see this person and this other person initiated in a wrestling match on the floor to my classmates. Very accurate. I mean, we're definitely not the only school in the, year in the world where people just... It's, it's a casual sight to see people wrestling and fighting in the halls. You know how it goes. But uh, usually taking an unfortunate chair with them as they tussled to the ground. It wouldn't be a typical morning without this person greeting me at the office by screaming my name. <laughs> so there's a guy at my school that literally... Every time I'd walk into the front office, he would just see me and scream my name every morning. That's kind of how he greets people. He's definitely different. He's, he's a different breed. He, it, it, it was hilarious, man. Those are the types of memories at high school. Like When I say this in the speech, it's definitely true. That's what you remember. You don't remember the knowledge or anything. You just remember the crazy personalities and things you did. Anyways, moving on. Those of us at school know this is how we like to make his presence known, and it's simply his way of saying hello. And who could forget the unwritten law of the North Gym? Once this person steps in and makes a few shots, he openly declares he's on a hot streak and won't leave the gym for hours. That's a good joke right there. You guys wouldn't understand. A lot of these jokes are like insta inside jokes for, for the school, which obviously when you're doing a school speech, it's kind of hard for people who don't know much about the school to get the joke. But that, that was a well-landed joke. Moving on. Yes, these are the funny memories and personalities I'll remember for many decades past our graduation. All of us on this stage possess our own unique set of characteristics, interests, and passions, but through our high school experiences, there's no doubt we've all shared the same feelings of triumph, failure, nervousness, and defeat at times. You know, honestly, I didn't want to be like the generic speaker at graduation, like, we're in this all together, guys, we can do this. I kind of just, I pulled out a little bit of the Sminify podcast, and I was like, hey guys, we all got our own passions and interests, I think that's pretty sweet, you should pursue your passions and interests, which is basically just what I said on this podcast a long time ago, so when I was writing this speech, I was thinking of the Sminify podcast, and that's where we're at. So I use some talking points from this on this, and that's nice. And, like, the thing is, I've always been, like, the quiet person, so people did not expect me to, like, speak. And uh, I think people told me it was a pretty good speech, so we'll take that. We'll take that as a win. It wasn't... I haven't heard any, it's a bad speech, so that's a win for us. But anyways, we've all had good days and bad days. We've all had positive and negative attitudes. We've all used our time both efficiently and non-efficiently. Emphasis on non-efficiently. But in the end, we've all cried and smiled as we recollected on the fun times we've shared here at our high school. Yeah, like, I, I try to speak truth in the speech. Again, I don't like those people who are like, we're all in this together, guys. For the rest of the life, I'll, I'll, I'll just be with you guys forever. We'll, be, we'll have each other's back for the rest of eternity. That's not true at all. I haven't seen any of my classmates, really. I've seen, like, four of them since that speech. Yeah, maybe, like, six or seven. I don't know. But the thing is, I'm not going to see a lot of these people again for the rest of my life, so I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to give the false hope or nothing. But, yeah. There's great good that has come from the challenges our high school days threw at us. It was the struggles and hardships that led us to times of self-evaluation and, and improvement. You know, I'm pulling out some more Spinify podcast there. Self-evaluation. I like that. I like that word. That's, that's good stuff. So I pulled out some more podcast talk there. High school helped reveal to us each individually where we both excelled and needed improvement. For example, one of my biggest challenges this year was getting to Mr. Miller's class on time in the mornings. Here's, here's another one of those joke scenarios. The people did enjoy this joke as well. Every day I'd get there right at 825, always be greeted by him staring me down in his chair saying, Oh, you almost missed it today, Dalton. I never did end up making it to his class earlier than one minute before it started. But using this information, I've learned that in future scenarios, it's much better to be early than late. So basically, I was just like, yeah, you got to use high school to self-evaluate how good you are. And then I just use kind of a fun example of being late to class, which again is kind of another inside joke. I really am a procrastinator, though. I literally pulled up to this guy's class like one minute before it started every day. Now, for a lot of kids, you guys probably pull up late to class, but I, I got there on time because I didn't want those tardies. I didn't want, like, suspension or whatever. None of that stuff. But yes. This is one of my many weaknesses high school revealed, and I encourage everyone else to recollect back on their experiences to see where they can improve as both a person and a student. So I brought in those boundaries outside of high school. I want you to improve as a person as well, recollecting back on your high school days. I tried to pull that out as well. Just It's not about high school. It's about being a better person. <laughs> yes, we try to pull out that deep stuff. But yes. Continuing on the speech, with the task of speaking at graduation, there comes the, expe the expectation of giving advice to the younger audience. Now, although I may be Mr. Late to Class, Heavy Procrastinator, and Poor Studier to name a few, my advice to the younger students and those in attendance today is this. Get involved. If you're contemplating participating in something, go out for it and realize your time in high school is limited. 
Take the advice your teachers give you. In the end, they are your friends and most definitely not your enemies. Use your time in high school to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses as a person. Learn from the mistakes and enjoy the good times as they won't last forever. Recognize that we are living in the good old days and time really does fly. Before you know it, it'll be you up here walking across the stage to certify the end of your high school career. So right there, I really pulled out the, I pulled out a lot of the Sminify podcast there and the uh, take advice and all that type of stuff. Get involved. Get I can't, guys, get involved in stuff. Like literally, I've went out for quite a few like sports and things and I can't say I've ever really regretted going out for anything. So if you guys are contemplating going out for something at your school, try to get involved, get into it. And like, obviously, if you're like, lacking friends or something if you get involved in a friend group or in an activity you could find a friend group in that honestly and just more motivation and passion and more purpose honestly getting involved in things that's that's the main thing i gotta uh, advise because that's the beauty of high school is all the things you can do um but yeah man i, I like that adv- i like that paragraph that's a good paragraph recognize that we're living in the good old days and time really does fly i like that because everyone's like i wish somebody would have told me when we're in the good old days so i just pulled out during the during the graduation speech i was like guys we're in the good old days enjoy these times we have them And, uh, yeah, moving on in the speech. Now, it wouldn't be a proper graduation speech if I didn't quote some third party. So, remember to stay motivated and take this advice from the words of the Joker himself. Some people want to see you fail. Disappoint them. So, yeah, I really thought this would be kind of another funny little joke here. The thing with graduation speeches is somebody always, like, quotes a third party, some deep quote about the meaning of life that they throw into their graduation speech. I just went ahead. I quoted the Joker himself and I just went with kind of a short quote. I didn't want to get that deep. And I thought that'd be kind of funny. I think it was, it was, it was well landed. It was, it was an okay part there, but uh, yeah, that's just another joke that kind of landed pretty well. And honestly, that's not bad advice. Some people want to see you fail, disappoint them. Not bad. It's kind of randomly thrown into the speech, but I thought it's just something that had to be put in there. The, the, the quote, the third party quote. And uh, yeah, so my speech was like four and a half minutes. I'll, I'll continue on. We're almost to the end here. Thank you all for coming to support the class of 2021 today as we conclude the first big chapter in our lives. To the parents, guardians, teachers, coaches, and family members who have supported us in any way throughout our journey to this stage. We appreciate you more than words can describe, and although we may not always show it, this is most certainly true. Fair enough. Remember, classmates, the diplomas we received today are our tokens demonstrating that we made it. Through all the adversity and stress, we persevered. Adversity. Okay, another inside joke. My old basketball coach used to say, "How do you respond to adversity?" So I had to throw the word adversity into this uh, into this speech somewhere, just because it's kind of funny. Kind of a nod towards towards the old basketball coach. Inside joke. I look forward to spending these last few moments with my classmates before we move on. I look forward to sharing our high school stories again at the reunion in 30 years, and I'm very interested in seeing where we all end up. Thank you all. I threw in the reunion there in 30 years because I just had to be truthful with myself, dog. I've not seen a lot of these people for a long time past past this graduation date, so I'm like. Guys, in 30 years, I think it's more truthful to say in 30 years we'll meet together and we'll talk about about the memories instead of saying we'll have each other's backs for 30 years. Not true, but yeah, guys. That was my entire graduation speech. Again, I think it landed pretty well, especially because like, the girl who went before me, her speech was kind of more emotional, so I went for the uh, for the humor side. You guys might not have saw much humor in that, but that's just that's because a lot of it was inside jokes. But uh, yeah, if you guys... I'm not saying don't try it like uh, at uh, grades and stuff because like scholarships, grades, GPA, ACT score... Like, at the end of the day, that knowledge is not important at all. Like, none of it, basically. But it is just important for getting money, scholarships. And if you guys want to go to college, definitely get good grades, lads. Uh, the system is kind of flawed. I don't know, dude. I don't know why that is. It's just so useless. But it's it's free money, dog. So get good grades. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was my graduation days. It's over. And again, I kind of struggle with comprehending that it's over. It's kind of hard to take in. But my advice to you guys is obviously just to enjoy it while you have it. And I don't take anything for granted. That is my graduation speech. I don't really have much else to talk about today. It's definitely going to be a very short podcast. Uh, let's see what time is it. It's also 11.22 a.m. right now, so I kind of got to go eat lunch because it is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Obviously, oh, I should go see what's trending on Twitter for Father's Day. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, come on, please be wholesome. Please be wholesome. Please be wholesome. Uh, James Charles is <laughs> trending on Father's Day. Pledge of Allegiance. Call Me Carson is trending on Father's Day. DeSantis. All right, well, there's nothing referencing Father's Day trending on Father's Day, but if it was Mother's Day, there would be. No, I'm not going to play the victim card. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for uh, listening to this podcast. I'm not going to try to drag this out for an hour. It was, uh, it was just a short little video saying I'm going to try to go off this uh, this week. Uh, my graduation days are over. we got to grapple with moving on in life. Everyone has to eventually. I am jealous of you younger kids who are still in high school. Enjoy it. And uh, until the next one, guys, I'll have a video for tomorrow, just a short little video, and then a tutorial Tuesday, stream Wednesday. If all goes to plan. Peace out, y'all. Have a great Sunday. Rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. It's been Smitty. Until the next one, guys. Take it easy. And uh, see you later. Peace.